Hi, if you've been wondering how you can set up a diversity, inclusion, and belonging program in your organization and you just don't know how, then this video is for you. This is Jody Ann Johnson, the people champion and strategist with the 89th episode of Coffee with Jody. I can imagine and picture people really in, in, inspired and in, you know, enthusiastic about a diverse inclusion program in their organizations and yet simply be going, I, I don't know how, how would I measure it? Maybe your team is wondering, is this the latest, greatest initiative or is this real? And you as an owner and leader have to make determinations on exactly what is it that you're going to monitor, how you're going to track progress and how to calculate a return on investment, all while engaging your organization in driving this initiative. Well, the first thing you have to do is to determine what are the metrics and measures that you want in your organization. Now, some of the obvious ones are gender or maybe sexual orientation, but there's a whole slew of other types of diversity that we wanna be looking at as we consider this for our organizations. Some of the things that you might want to measure would include race, nationality, ethnicity, you might want to include family status, parental status, educational level, and today, even flex working. Now it's important that whichever metrics you choose or measures you're choosing, that they reflect what's going on locally in your, in your community and in your industry. Because not each of those is going to be as relevant in one setting as it might be in another. So you'll look at your industry, you'll look at your community and make decisions about what is most important for you as the owner and leader to do. Next, you wanna make sure that you review your data policies so that information you're gathering can never be used against someone to discriminate against them. So your data policies are very important to make sure that their identities are safe. So there's three different areas that you'll want to cover. One is to diagnose what are the risks and opportunities. The next one is how are you going to track this? And then the third one is how are you going to calculate the return on investment? Some of the metrics that can be used in your organization to identify blind spots and hidden biases will start with looking at representation, like what's already in your organization in terms of different groups that you've chosen to, to uh, measure. How many people from the identified groups that you want to measure are in your organization for any length of time? And then comparing them to the standard uh, retention rates of other employees in your organization as a whole. The next one would be recruitment. Are you actually recruiting to meet your diversity and, inclu and inclusion metrics. And then from the recruitment, who is being selected? You know, are, out of all of the candidates that are interviewed, which ones get selected? From selection, we can see whether or not there are unconscious biases. If you look at a common example like men and women and, uh, and they're pr being promoted in the workplace, then as you, as you evaluate your organization, Take a look and see, and men or women tend to be promoted more. And when they are, are their pays equal and their rewards equal? If it's role specific, even if women are being paid the same, but overall in your company, they're not equal to men in the, in the organization, then you can take a look at whether or not there may be a hidden bias in terms of pay and benefits. The next area to take a look at is employee engagement. So you're identifying whether or not the target groups that you're looking to monitor and you're looking to drive are as engaged in the workplace as other people are in the workplace. From there, take a look at you know, whether or not people stay in your organization, whether they leave voluntarily or involuntarily, 
In an exit interview, you can find out whether people feel that they belong there, whether they felt safe in your environment. And if they don't, this is very valuable information for you to include in your tracking. Another area that I'd like you to consider, um, I hadn't necessarily considered it until I did some research for this particular video, and that is what about your suppliers? What about your vendors and your customers? They're like, oh wow, you know, do we actually have representation of these different groups that we want to monitor in our supplier base or in our client base? So you have both your internal and your external metrics. If you have a true commitment to diversity and inclusion and belonging, then it's gonna extend beyond the walls of your organization. So metrics to track. Obviously, you're going to take the areas that you've chosen to be important to you and your business, create a baseline for that, and then start tracking, most likely on a quarterly basis, to the targets that you've set. The next thing that you're going to do is to calculate the return on investment. Now this might be financial, it could be productivity related, it might be employee engagement scores, any number of things that you're looking at that are going to give you a demonstrated return on your investment, financial and non-financial. Sometimes it's how many new innovative ideas have come out. Um, even that can probably be turned into a financial, but you can look at productivity or you can look at cost savings. And so you'll establish a handful of ways that you want to measure return on investment and then at the very least publish that annually. But it would be great if you actually discussed it at the level of the organization on a quarterly basis. So those are the three things that you can do. Identify what are the things that you want to measure Set up a tracking tool for that with a baseline and a, a regularly a scheduled frequency of, of measuring. And then establish a return on investment. So you'll look and see what were the baselines, whether they're dollars or the non-financial baseline that you want to measure, and then measure that on a quarterly and annual basis. So hopefully, this is giving you some ideas of things that you can begin to do in your organization to really cement setting up a diversity, inclusion, and belonging program at your company. And if you need any help with that, then please feel free to reach out to me. If you like this video, please like it, share it, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you'd like to find out more about how business coaching can help you to reach the goals you have in your company, please fill in the calendar link below and we'll schedule a discovery call where I can explore that with you. And that's it for today. Bye for now.